Does time have an impact on the pricing of bonds? That's the basic question that we're looking at today. Now, the reason that we're looking at this is because as we move throughout time, we have this notion of the time value of money. And so we want to be able to understand, is this actually going to impact that price of a bond? Okay. Now, I'd like to lead you out by, by asking a question. Okay. How much does a bond pay out at maturity? Okay. That's a question that we should say. How much will a bond pay out at maturity? A bond will pay out of maturity simply the par value, right? Because at maturity, when this bond expires, when this IOU expires, what will the investor receive? The investor will receive that future value, that face value. The investor will receive that face value, right? Let's say that face value is $1,000. What else will they receive? They will also receive a coupon payment, right? They will also receive their payment. This will all be received at maturity, okay? So all of this is coming in at maturity, and we're trying to figure out what the happens to the price of bonds over time, okay? So now we know is that all bonds will pay out par value at maturity. They'll pay out par value and a coupon payment, whatever, at whatever that coupon rate is. Okay. Now, I'm just going to illustrate something here with a couple of examples. Okay. And please feel free to follow me along with your calculator if you have it out or with an Excel spreadsheet. Um, some of these things we, we can do relatively quick. Um, but let's say we, on all these examples here, we're going to assume a par value of $1,000. We're also going to assume a market interest rate. We're going to assume R is going to be 10%. And that's for these three bonds that we're going to be looking at. Okay. And uh, we're going to start off with an example here of a company A. Okay. This has a bond, a 1,000 par value bond. Let's say, and they're all going to start off with a 10 year bond okay so we're saying at a 10-year bond okay and we're also saying see what happens at a five year and then at a one year okay and this bond has a coupon payment of eight percent okay so that how much does that mean the payment is going to be right it's going to be eight percent multiplied by the thousand dollars so we have a coupon payment here of eighty dollars okay so if we put this stuff in, we have a payment of $80, we have a interest rate of 10%, we have a number of time periods of 10, and a future value of 1,000. That means that our market value on this 10-year bond is going to be $877, right? We know that this one is trading at a discount. Okay, this is a discount bond. It is trading at a discount, it's trading underneath par value, okay? So I want you to think about this for just a moment and think about what's going to happen to the price of this bond when we move to five years, when you move to one year remaining, and what happens at maturity, okay? Now we're gonna look at bond B, okay? We have bond B, and bond B is a similar structure, except for bond B has a coupon payment of 10%. Okay, this is just stated, so that means we have an amount here, a coupon payment on the amount of $100, okay? So that coupon rate is 10%, the discount rate is also 10%, so what do we know that the actual value of this bond is going to be with 10 years remaining? It's going to be equal to the par value, right? It's going to have a value of $1,000 because coupon rate equals market rate, 10% equals 10%. Okay, then we move into, you don't even need to put that one in your calculator. You don't even need to do any, any real math there. We look at five years. What happens to, where's the value of that bond at? The bond is going to be at $1,000, right? And then what about at one year, right? $1,000. So over time, if the market rate remains constant and the rate at, the coupon rate remains equal to the market rate, the value of this bond will remain constant. A par value bond will not change over time. It will have the same value from 10 years, 20 years, one year, whatever. Okay. Now we're going to show another example here. We're going to, because we have a discount bond, we have a par value bond. And then what's the last type of bond that we're probably going to be popping up here? That's right. We're going to be looking at a bond that is selling at a premium. Okay. So we have 10 years left. We have five years left and we have one year left. 
okay? So on this one, we're gonna be selling a premium bond. Think about this for a second. It, what kind of rate is this gonna be? Less than, equal to, or greater than 10%. It's going to be greater than 10%, right? Because if I'm getting paid over market rate, that's gonna command a premium, okay? It's gonna command more. So we ha we're gonna here have a 12% rate. We're gonna multiply this by the $1,000, okay? And that's gonna show us, we're gonna have a payment here of $120, okay? So we have a payment of $120, we have 10 years remaining, we have a 10% market rate, right? Because market rate here, this is, in all of these, this is going to be I over Y in all of these calculations of, in every one of these bonds. Uh, so we have an interest rate of 10%, we have a number of time periods of 10, we have a $120 payment, and we have a $1,000 future value, okay? So that means that we're gonna show a value here on this 10-year bond on uh, the amount of $1,123, right? That is a premium bond that is trading at a premium, okay? Now, we're gonna jump ahead here for just a second. What do we think all these bonds are gonna, and I started this lecture off, what do we think all these bonds are gonna be worth at maturity at time when there is zero time remaining, this bond is expired? They're all gonna be equal to the future value here, right? They're all gonna be at maturity Every single one of them is going to have a value of $1,000, okay? So, we just need to see what happens to the value of this over time, right? Um, is this bond, bond A, we're now looking at bond A. Is this bond going to remain at $877 over five in, in one year? No, it's not, right? Because I am have to sell this at a discount, I'm receiving under market rates for the next 10 years. If I'm only receiving under market rates for one year, I don't have to take as much of a discount on that bond, okay? So if we just, all we do on this first one is on bond A, if we just change our number of time periods from 10 to five, what do we think happens to that value of that bond? Does it go up or does it go down? It's going to go up to $924. What do you think it's gonna do with only one year remaining? Is it gonna go up even more? Yes, it's gonna go up a lot more and it's gonna be at a value that's pretty close to par value, okay? This value is gonna come up to $981, okay? And then we look at bond C, right? So we see that over time, right, is that the bond, bond A, is getting closer to the face value of $1,000 as T decreases, okay? We get, as we get closer to $1,000, the bond value comes closer to $1,000. So the bond value, a discount bond, is actually increasing in value as we move to maturity, okay? So then we're gonna move over to bond C. We'll look at this one with the premium. What do we think is gonna happen to the value of this bond as we move towards maturity? That's right, the value of this bond is going to decrease, it's going to move towards par value, okay? So if we just, all we do is change this 10 to a five and leaving all this other stuff over here is that that's going to show us we're gonna have a bond valuation now of $1,076, right? We saw the value of that bond, it fell, right? Because I now have less time that I'm going to be receiving above market rents, okay? Above market coupons. Then we're gonna to move to one year. Where do we think the value of this one's gonna be? Is it gonna be close, not so close, way over, what is it gonna be? It's going to be close to the par value of $1,000 and still greater than, and we're going to show here a value of $1,018, okay? So we're seeing that it is, just like the discount bond, it is getting closer to $1,000, okay? Same thing that's happening on both of them. Both of them are getting closer to $1,000. The discount bond is gaining in value as we get closer to expiration. The premium bond is decreasing in value as we get closer to expiration because we now have less payments available. Now, when we say this here is that when there is zero remaining, all bonds, it doesn't matter what the coupon coupon rate is, if it's zero, if it's 100, whatever the rate is going to be, it doesn't matter when zero remaining, 
at maturity, all bonds equal face value. Okay. Every single one of them equals face value at maturity. Okay. Every one of them. Okay. So this lecture was just going over basically what happens to the value of a bond as we move towards maturity, right? A discount bond is going to gain value. It's going to increase. It's going to converge on the face value. Premium bond is going to lose and move closer to face value. And a par value bond is just going to stay where it's at.